today we will have an anointing service and in it what we do is we will at the end of this message ask you to come in the middle aisle forward and everyone who comes I will anoint with oil as a symbol of the Holy Spirit from heaven and then to your left hand I will put this word of testimony the miraculous healing of that little child and to your right hand I will put this anointed prayer cloth as a release of your own anointing as a release of what God has put into you to be released into whomever you take this to and as I do that our ministry team will be on either side they'll pray and prophesy over you so it's a threefold anointing and oil as a symbol of the Holy Spirit and a word of testimony and a prayer cloth that will be wrapped with your own anointing and you will release it now Acts chapter 1 verse 4 I want to tell you that the Holy Spirit was a great encounter to me I got born again in 1971 until 1975 I did not know the person of the Holy Spirit the result of it was that my Christian life was subservient or far less than my academic life then in 1975 I used to get migraine often and I was asked to come for a meeting conducted by a judge of the Supreme Court and when I went for that meeting they lay hands and my migraine disappeared my eyesight became normal I used to wear spectacles to this day I read without spectacles but the other thing that happened was the scripture I was struggling with though I read scripture regularly because I, I, I had to do it I was a Christian since 1971 February I was a Christian uh, but but it was always a struggle because medical books are far more interesting than the Bible but when the baptism of the Holy Spirit came upon me on December 17th 1975 everything changed word of, be word of God became alive I was finally a medical student and everything changed and the word of God became far more interesting than my medicine pediatric surgery and gin and ops I still got my I, I topped the batch even that year but every day I read God's Word more than my medical textbooks big difference came to me I began to understand the Holy Spirit so I want to introduce you the baptism of the Holy Spirit person of the Holy Spirit and the ministry of the Holy Spirit Acts chapter 1 verse 4 being assembled together that's a, that's very important for the ministry of the Holy Spirit say with me assembled together he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem but to wait for the promise of the Father say with me promise of the Father which he said you have heard from me shall we read together verse 5 for John truly baptized with water together John truly baptized with water but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now verse 8 you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem in all Judea and Samaria to the end of the earth so the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes to give you power and to make you a witness Holy Spirit draws you to Jesus and takes from Jesus and fills you and the Holy Spirit sends you out threefold action of the Holy Spirit say the Holy Spirit draws me to Jesus and Holy Spirit takes from Jesus and fills me and the Holy Spirit sends me out with his power in his power so the Christian life from beginning to end is of the Holy Spirit because Jesus said I am going away it is very necessary for me to go away it is good for me to go away all word is expedient for me to, sooner I go away the better it is because I can be only with you Holy Spirit will be in you I can only be with you Holy Spirit will be in you I will come back as Holy Spirit to be in you so you will think automatically like me because I will be in you so what does the baptism of the Holy Spirit mean Holy Spirit will be Jesus Christ will be in you rather than 
with you. Praise the Lord. Now, John truly baptized with water, verse 5, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So, the water baptism buries your old life. Will you do that with me? The water baptism buries my old life. But the Holy Spirit baptism propels me into my new life. Let's get, uh, 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 uh. Did you understand? One more time. Water baptism buries my old life. Holy Spirit baptism propels me onward, upward into my new life. So both are important, but you see the difference. Water baptism buries, buries, buries my old life, old memories and what not. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit propels me onward, upward in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful thing. Then the Father made a promise to the Son. That's why the Holy Spirit is given. That's why the Holy Spirit will always come. When you say, fill my cup, Lord. Who fills the cup? Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, people like David or Isaiah had the Holy Spirit coming on them for a specific function, isn't it? For a specific task at a particular time. Holy Spirit comes on them and he moves away. But in the New Testament we can say, fill my cup. In the Old Testament also David knew he anoints my head with oil. My cup runs over. More than most in the Old Testament, David knew about the function of the Holy Spirit coming to him. But he desperately prayed, take not the Holy Spirit from me. You remember? When he has sinned with Bathsheba, he knew, ah, Holy Spirit is grieved and gone, not with us. Holy Spirit has now come to stay with us, make a permanent abode in us. Will you say hallelujah? So here is Acts 2.33. Therefore being exalted to the right hand of God, this is Jesus, to the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. Now I want to take your thoughts back to Jesus' last scene. Gruesome. Brutal. Tragic. He's on the cross. Are you there? You're there? Crown of thorns. Stripes all over him. Pierced. Breathing his last. And he suddenly comes back to life and energy and says, Yes! finished sin finished judgment finished and he collapses he is buried put in the tomb he goes out of human sight isn't it next we see him at the right hand of the father did you see that you understand what I am saying his last scene very tragic we cry isn't it but he said it is finished Heaven opening, head is shattering cry, Yes, fresh! While he was dying, what did he do? So this side of the congregation must answer this question. After he said, it is finished, what did he do? This side of the congregation must answer the question, Having gone to the Father's right hand, being exalted to the right hand of God, Acts 2.33, having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. What did he do having gone to the Father's right hand? What is the question you have to answer? After he said, it is finished, what did he do? I think that question is tougher. What did he do? After he said, it is finished, what did he do? Pardon? His spirit was given up. He said, Father, I commit my spirit to you. What did he do? He down went. Drun, 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 drun. He went down into Hades and he presented his fully credential sinless life at the gates of Hades nobody had gone to Hades ever before with a sinless life everybody who went to Hades went with a 
sinful life sin stained life so gates of hades were prevailing and standing getting taller every year by the sins accusations indictments crimes leveled against human beings gates of hades were becoming bigger and bigger earth was becoming more intolerable but save me one single life one holy life one sinless life of jesus christ descends and comes before the heads of gates of hades gates of hades hades is shattered save me shattered and he takes keys and he takes captivity captive people are kept in captivity by the designs of hades and some captivities are a jilted cage it's made out of platinum gold iridium and silver some cages are glittering but they are still cages prison houses what did jesus do took captivity captive all the captivities that you have ever faced jesus has taken under his authority so when he comes into my life when i say lord jesus please come he descends to where i am and takes my captivity he has the keys of authority authority over it and then he takes me my rebellion is over my disobedience is over and he gives me the gift he stirs up in me the gift that has been long neglected and we begin to shine bright than we ever could because the holy spirit has come into us and on the other side we see him at the right hand of the father he does this for us then goes to the right hand of the father and what does he do from there being exalted to the right hand of god having received from the father the promise of the holy spirit will you say the promise of the holy spirit he poured out that which you now see and hear and when the holy spirit comes into you you will hear grace rather than offense sometimes from our young days we have heard offense indictment guilt accusations all our life but our hearing changes we are hearing grace grace and more grace and we begin to see opportunity rather than difficulty we begin to have hope rather than despair we love arises in our heart where earlier hatred was faith rather than unbelief trust rather than skepticism belief rather than cynicism we stop being sarcastic cynical <laughs> so you tell me will you it stops and there's appreciation rather than criticism mercy rather than judgment our seeing changes our hearing changes our perception insight changes god likes me i also like me all our divisions disintegrations things i don't like about myself goes away there's pleasure at the right hand of god divine pleasure enters me i am a changed person matthew 10:20 says the spirit of your father now speaks in you there's another father out there father of lies deception cruelty put down rejection he's manufacturing these captivities all the time but jesus has taken all those captivities and put it in his pocket and he gives us his liberty will you say it me jesus takes captivity away gives me his liberty matthew 10:20 it is not you who will speak now the spirit of your father speaks up for you in you who speaks the heavenly father spirit speaks up for you this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased a big change comes you don't even think before thinking who speaks up for you the spirit of your father you are insulted you are cornered you are put down and the spirit of your father speaks up inside you saying no you are much loved do you hear the spirit of your father above what the world says above what your past says spirit of your father is 